Hi everyone and welcome to my exhibition. I want to talk today about my art and my development as an artist and my continuing journey to gain more art knowledge. When I came to the School of Art and Design, I was a general surgeon and my amazing teachers here taught me how to become a painter, a sculptor, but most important, a true artist. Art to me is of no value unless it is thought provoking. My paintings tell a story. Some are past life experiences, some conceptual dream sequences. Sometimes I paint things which touch me deeply. They all have a humane message and social context. With my paintings, I try to create a personal space and an experience which my viewer can share and they can also share the empathy that I created for my subjects, which are mostly female now. Dance and ballet are a big part of my life and my paintings. So it wasn't a surprise when I needed an art gallery. The first person I thought of was our prima ballerina, Kim Polly, and she was gracious enough to open her whole ballet studio gallery for me and for making this solo exhibition possible. I'm so grateful to her. My expression has matured gradually under the subtle and thoughtful guidance of Professor Haggerty, who more than anything instilled in me the courage to take risks. I'm uh, going more and more towards new expressionism now, and at times pure non-representational abstraction, but I still see images and fig figures in my abstractions and the social context then takes a more complex form. <sighs> Definitely my art tends to be autobiographical. There is a lot of candid truth in my paintings, a clear preoccupation with death, illness, intimations of mortality. I touch upon relationships, love, lust, and hatred. There is a certain sensuality if you look close enough, but always a feeling of hope, rebirth and rejuvenation. Painting is an adventure, an experiment for me. I like to try new materials and techniques from Anson Kiefer's thick textures to uh, Gerhard Richter's mixed media, Arturo Herrera's collages, to just very recently Helen Frankenthaler's soak stain technique on raw canvas. My teachers at the School of Art and Design taught me how to experience life through art. Frederick was probably the, the reason that I became serious about art. He taught me how to think like a true artist and to become organized. Jonathan Cox and Nate Ditzer taught me how to work nonstop and do those all-nighters. Ian Haggerty taught me how to focus and to be bold and assertive and to just do it. <laughs> he taught me that the sky was the limit, something that he probably lived to regret as my paintings became so huge that he had to literally throw me out of the painting studio. <laughs> but luckily, he sent me to Sarah McDermott, the most chill teacher ever, her hermetic wisdom of one is all. She taught me that there were no boundaries in art. Miyuki taught me discipline and she tried to teach me anger management in vain. <laughs> Uh, John Cartwright sharpened my drawing skills so I could pull those David Hockney uh, perspective tricks that I always wanted to. Hasten Morton taught me how to do a legit financial projection for business. Rachel Danford taught me the language of art. And Heather Stark taught me how to be a true feminist. XX. <laughs> That's a joke between us. Danny Kaufman taught me never to quit. He saw such a positive person, a real life tiger, for sure. <laughs> Art school, I feel, is all about learning uh, the strict rules and then armed with that core knowledge, teaching oneself to unravel slowly and experiment. Picasso 
once invited to a children's exhibition, famously said, I could draw like Raphael when I was five, but it took me a lifetime to learn to draw like them. That's pretty much my story, but luckily I kept the child alive inside. Yes, definitely uh, the future. A grad school to continue my learning trajectory and polish my skills further for professional maturity. But uh, really, where do I see myself in five years? All the studio art will be my main concentration. I really want to paint murals like Julie Mary too and address issues of social injustice, justice for people like George, George Floyd. I do have a dream today that one day I'll make a gallery just like the beautiful Saatchi Art Gallery in London and a hub for like-minded artists who are not afraid to fight for justice. And I want to make a small art school for children with ADHD and autism and use art as therapy. The physician and healer in me wants to do that. Lastly, I want to thank my family, my children, my two little ones for putting up with all my painting clutter and my fussiness. Mimi for constantly editing my awkward English. Avas for patiently guiding me to tackle tech hurdles and Sa Sadi for helping me with the installation. I want to thank our uh, gallery director, Jamie Platt, for all her last minute help. I feel the more I know, the less I know. And like the Ouroboros, I am on a constant cycle of renewal and growth. And like the serpent feeds on its own tail, I, f I feed on knowledge and empathy for others to regenerate. Thank you. Stay well, everyone, and I hope you enjoy the exhibition.